everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. Today we're in front of the Stephen King shelves. You know what that means. It's a Stephen King themed episode. I talked about doing this last week and I got several people saying yes, please do that. So today we're talking about my top 5 favorite scenes in Stephen King's It. We are going to go through this. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do... I, we all know what number one is going to be, I think, if you watch the other videos. You already know what my number one is going to be. So I'm going to start with that, and then I'm going to talk about the other ones. Because other than the number one, they're pretty much in no discernible order. Um, I just don't... I, I don't think I could put one above the other, other than number one. And number one would be... Uh, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert, of course, this is a top five uh, discussion of my favorite scene, so of course, spoilers. My favorite scene in it, and I'm, this last time I'm showing this monstrosity, this big son of a, woo, yeah, um, because it's heavy. Uh, my, my favorite scene in the book is Ben and Pennywise in, in the winter on the bridge, and Pennywise shows to him as a mummy. It's one of the creepiest scenes in the book, and I, I love the mounting dread of it. Uh, it's a terrific scene, fantastically written. Um, one of the best scenes King has ever written. I would say it's, it's the best scene, because subjectively, it's my favorite scene in all of King's work. Um, but jumping from that, we're going to go into another scary scene that is absolutely fantastically done, and one of the only scenes that the original 1990 minis miniseries did better then the remake, and that is Mrs. Kirsch. When Bev goes back to see her father after coming back to the town when she's an adult, and finds out that her dad's been dead for a long time, and she ends up going, she meets an old woman named Mrs. Kirsch, and she invites her in for tea, they have tea, and things go very, very badly. Uh, I, I love what they did with the, the scene in uh, the the 90s miniseries where she's slurping the tea. She's like, you need to run, Bevy. Run, run far, far away. That, that whole sequence is amazingly creepy. Um, all the way up in the, in the 90s version, there's a scene where it just, of course, Pennywise would have caught her because she's running out the door and he's like right there behind her. Or the actor that's playing her father um, is like right there behind her. So that was kind of goofy. But the scene leading up to that is amazing. Um, in the book, the book is just dripping with dread. That entire sequence, you know something is wrong. You know something is coming. And when it finally, the, the reveal, you know, of course, this is that. But it's one of those things that has stuck with me uh, ever since I first read it. That, that, you know, the very, very calm, you need to run, baby. You know, I'm going to give you a chance. This monster's telling her, you need to get the fuck out of here. And it was like, what's what's going on? That's a that's an amazing amazing scene for me. So let's say that one's at number five. Um, we've already done one. We've already done five. Uh, the next one is Stan Uris's death. Uh, in the book, that 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 scene is so well done. You have absolutely no character development whatever whatsoever for Stanley yet. None. And he basically goes through, it's a, I believe it's a 30 page scene. Um, I can never, uh, I, I'm always reading it. Uh, I usually read to two to four pages a night, sometimes upwards of 10 pages a night. Um, even as soon as I finish it, I start it all over again. It's one of those books you can do that with, at least I can do that with. Um, but the, it's, the Stan, Stan's suicide is the scene, one of those scenes that I have to read all the way through. Uh, I can't stop because it's just so well done, and I think it's the longest chapter in the book as far as as far as the page page breaks are concerned. There's no there's no breaks in it. It's just continuous backstory, um, and he builds all this up, and you get to know this character, and you get to know him through his interactions with his wife. You get to know um, how they got together, how they met. You get the build up. You get all of that, and then he kills himself, and it's. That sequence, that, that scene, just, it, it bothers me. Because you see him so happy, you see where he's gone in his life, he's grown up, he's doing really well, then Mike calls, and Mike just screws everything up. Uh, and, and of course, it's one of the sadder moments uh, when the, the Losers Club finds out that Stan is dead. Um, I, I think that is a very powerful moment in the book, and it happens really, really early on. Which brings me to, I guess if you want to call that number four, we're going to go to number three. Um, 
it number three is the opening of the book the very first chapter is it after the flood I want to say it's after the flood um, it could be during the flood I always forget how uh, let's see here uh, yeah after the flood 1957 is the first chapter uh, I read this chat the, this chapter on stream one night uh, uh, and I, I did Pennywise's voice, the new Pennywise, uh, Skarsgård's Pennywise. Had a lot of fun. I think 16 pages long. Uh, fantastic, fantastic opening. It's probably my favorite book opening ever. Yes, even more so than The Gunslinger. Um, that opening line, I never thought it as powerful as most people said it was. I always find this single chapter is the most powerful opening of a book. Uh, you get... All the character build up, the character development you need for Bill right right there. You know, Bill's sick. Uh, Bill is making a boat for his brother because he's a good older brother. You know, he's doing the same. Even though he's sick, and yes, he he's he's ragging on him the whole time. Uh, he's j jiving at him. They're they're going back and forth, and you feel these two kids are brothers. You feel the love there, even though they are riffing on each other, or Bill's riffing on on Georgie. And then of course the way the scene ends. You know, Georgie ends up dying, um, and I, I, I love that just for how how much King was able to pack into such a short period of time as an opening. It's also written in in part in first person omniscient. The King gives you uh, because he says in the book it's the only time he references himself as I as a story as a storyteller. He says, the terror, which would not end for another 28 years, if it ever did end, began, so far as I know or can tell, with a boat made from a sheet of newspaper floating down a gutter swollen with rain. Um, now, there's some speculation that Mike, this could be Mike's, uh, Mike's thoughts. As far as Mike, because Mike tells some of this story, he tells about the black spot, he tells about the uh, the cabin, he tells about all the all the things that's happened in Derry's past. Um, so it could be it could be thought of it could be supposed uh, that that's actually Mike writing this opening. I disagree. I think it's King saying, "Okay, I'm here to tell you a story." So just so you know, I am the narrator and I am telling you this story. But I think the opening of this book is brilliant. Um, it, like I said, it, if we're going to put it somewhere, this is like scene best, third best scene. Which brings me to my second favorite scene in the book. I'm going to cheat here and say all of the flashbacks. Uh, I'm going to give one above all of them, but all of the flashbacks are great. The, the axe murders, the, the black spot, all those are great. But my favorite one is the shootout in Derry. Um, that just one of those scenes that kind of comes out of nowhere, and you are shown the insidious nature of the entity that is it, and how it has transformed this town, and his uh, overbearing nature, the, the the sense of evil that has bled into this town. And I hear jokes all the time, it's like, "Oh, Derry must be a you know, Derry is an awful place. All the grown-ups are assholes, and all the kids are bullies." Well, yeah. And that's one of the things that King was building up throughout the entire book is letting me know that it has an influence on the majority of the town. Uh, it's it, it's evil just kind of overflows into people, uh, and fear fear will make you angry. And it's that sense that this town has been in fear of this thing that they had the fear of the unknown, and that this says a lot about small town America, small town anywhere. How the fear of the unknown can force the the majority's hand, or how it can change the whole feel, the whole morale of an entire town um, when an outside force comes in, uh, whether it be good, bad, or otherwise. You know, the the fear of the unknown is very, very strong, and that's what you're dealing with here. You're dealing with a town where every 27 years. Their kids start dying off. You know, it's 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 a very it, it's one of those things that the town has been poisoned, and that's one of the reasons why the ending works so well with the town kind of coming apart, uh, the crack running through town and him following the crack, which is an amazing scene. Also, it's not here on the list, but it's an amazing scene. Also, um, it's just you just have you you have to see the town kind of you know tear itself down before it can rebuild itself after you know it dies. Uh, but that, those are my top five scenes from Stephen King's It. I would love to hear from you guys uh, down there in the doobly-doo your favorite 
uh, scenes from the book. doesn't have to be five of them. You can talk about one. You can talk about 20 for all I care. Um, I would love to read them. I am on hiatus right now. Uh, this video was shot earlier in the week. I will be reading the Institute and I'm going to be staying off social media until I am done with the Institute. So if I'm not answering comments or whatever, don't worry about it. I will be back soon and I will try to catch up as much as possible. But um, I will definitely come back to this video and I will respond to as many of you as I can. Hopefully that means all of you. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye!